Am I audible? Yeah, yes, sir. You are audible. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Please. Am I visible too? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, so Mr. Mr. Gautam Bhattacharya is a research fellow of SCRT West Bengal. So he will be sharing the Bengal like, SCRT goals. Yeah. Please make your camera good because the visibility is poor. Uh, yeah, but the, I'm afraid this is the maximum that I can help you with. This is all the illumination I have in okay, the room. No. Yeah. Oh, you should. <laughs> I'm sorry. I cannot help you much here. Uh, I have a very old laptop and oh, yeah. it has a very old resolution camera. So maybe I don't know maybe because of that. Okay. No, you should. Anyway, um, so uh, should we be starting? I have, to, I have a yes, screen. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I have a screen to share. Uh, let me first please, share this please share screen. screen. Screen, let me come up with it. Yeah. Mm. Is the screen visible? Yes. Um, yes, it will be visible now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So I need to make it a slideshow so that it becomes. Make it. Uh, yeah. Screen. Yeah, full screen. So. I guess. It becomes yes. a slight true now. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. My, my all respect to the dignitaries from our country and uh, abroad. With all due respect, I present to this August House uh, <clears throat> a brief outline, basically, as it says. Um, uh, See, the curriculum followed by school education in West Bengal. West Bengal is the state where I live in. Uh, I'm from uh, SCRT West Bengal, and this is one of the eastern states in India. So this is only a part of uh, the total pan-Indian scenario, but this reflects what our state follows. And uh, as uh, you might be knowing that there are several boards, uh, boards and councils. Uh, sorry, is this a notification coming? over here anyway so there are some boards and councils which are um, the you know the uh, those are the nodal agencies as per right to education act in our state for the respective stages of uh, education for example we have a west bengal board of primary education for the primary stage west bengal board of secondary education for the uh, 6 to 10 stage and west bengal council of higher secondary education and beyond that we have also a council for technical education uh, Ravindra Open Schooling, uh, West Bengal Council for Ravindra Open Schooling for Open Schools, for Madrasa, we have a council, so on and so forth. So there are uh, several councils and boards which are autonomous statutory bodies, uh, and those are the nodal agencies by uh, dint of which they actually they uh, are the ones who uh, carry forward the task of uh, developing the curriculum and um, these boards and councils are also in charge of uh, conducting examination, certification, uh, so on and so forth. So the curriculum that is followed in school education in West Bengal is framed by the respective boards and council in those stages. What I'm sharing is a brief outline of what those curriculum follow. So we move on with the next slide. So what is the foundation of all these uh, curricular, uh, um, prim the premise on which these curricular different stages for primary, for secondary and high secondary are built upon? <clears throat> it's the, the first one we all know, the 1993 Jashpal Committee Report, Learning Without Burden. Uh, so what we know that it's not the load, the load is not only the load, the gravitational load of the bag itself, the school bag, it's very big, very heavy. That's one thing. But there is another load of non-comprehension. That is what Professor uh, Yashpal said. It, they, they, they very much came up with this idea that what took away the happiness, the joy, pleasure of learning from the child. It's, is it the, uh, what, what is it there? The load is there, the load of uh, the, of course, with such heavy bags, such little kids, they are all moving around with such a huge bag. So the gravitational load is, of course, bugging them down. And there is another load, which is far too heavy for them to bear around, is that load of non-comprehension. Non-comprehension vis-a-vis the textual, you know, the transactions that take place in the classrooms each day over and over again 
throughout the month, throughout the year, they go across these things, which build up these non-comprehensions, build up on them, which is no less a load, which is no, uh, you know, uh, which is no, uh, it's, it's, it's fairly formidable. I mean, the gravitational load is perceptible in that way that we can fill it with bare hands, but the non-comprehensional load is perceptible over the years among the generations, which took away the pleasure of learning. It's, we, we have to now look forward to what is preventing us from creating an environment to cater a joyful learning to the kids. So the second uh, foundation is the national curriculum framework. Of course, uh, the, uh, in, you know, in uh, the chronological uh, order, the Dellers Commission, which I have mentioned in the fourth bullet should come next. It has come up in 1996. The Deller Commission report, the, there was also the European Union Commission. They, they have a very specific cutout, you know, four pillars for learning. Uh, they have stated that learning to know, learning to do, learning to be, and learning to live together. So these four pillars of learning, as per Deller Commission report, was there in 1996. There were further all these recommendations were taken on board, and a comprehensive uh, framework was developed in 2005, National Curriculum Framework, where they have uh, they have you know uh, highlighted there is a journey from known to unknown. There is a we, we have everything the child needs to know around him or her, but maybe he or she gets everything from around her, but she knows very little of things that comes from around her. So what they need to know also is the local surrounding. It is not that it has to be the local surrounding only. It can be the local surrounding first and from there from local to global this is exactly what the uh, uh, national curriculum framework 2005 has given the stresses upon the right to education act 2009 then came up with child's understanding of knowledge and his or her ability to apply the same now this is a case of comprehension is underscored here see the learning without burden report the yashwal committee report was also underscoring the load, the burden of non-comprehension. So Right to Education Act rightly stressed upon the importance of the ability of comprehension, understanding. So with this, we come to the quality dimensions with which the curricular areas have been developed. There are four quality dimensions. First, the knowledge. The knowledge comes as the essential cognitive, this is the achievement. What finally, uh, why we say this, this is the cognitive achievement that all learners should reach, it is not. The knowledge part is that, which includes literacy, numeracy, core subject, domain area, the domain knowledge of the core competence, core subject areas. But it is not limited to that. There are values, the values of solidarity, values of gender equality, tolerance, mutual understanding, respect for human rights, nonviolence, respect for human life uh, comes twice, and then dignity. Skills or competencies, a secure command of how to solve problems, to communicate clearly and with due respect. This is one thing. Our communications tend to be more and more emphatic and we move away more and more from being, uh, you know, we, we keep on, um, we keep losing our focus from being uh, humble. The humility strain, the part in us which uh, guides us to be respectful to others' opinions also, but to be firm on what we believe unless we get a better logic to think otherwise. So the power of communication has to be there, but with the due respect to superior logic if there is any, to experiment. Of course, they, one has to experiment work in teams because uh, collective learning uh, where we uh, the teamwork group work essentially we have a uh, you know we work in projects we make the children work in teams so they should know how to work learn and act in teams maybe 
some playing the leadership roles there, some getting uh, uh, followed, some are, uh, you know, you, the child has to do both the roles. Sometimes he has to, he or she has to lead the team. Sometimes he or she must get led by uh, his or her peer in order to achieve a common target, a shared target. So, and also to interact with those who are different. And these are the areas where the child, the curriculum also keeps in view that there are differently able children, learners around the child. And uh, every child, every learner should know, should have the due uh, respect and due approach, proper approach for those who are differently able. And finally, how to learn. They learn how to learn. So these are the skills or competency sets that the quality dimensions include. And lastly, but not the least, there should be a proactive behavior, the willingness to put into practice what has been learned. So I have learned many things, but there has to be, the child must come up with uh, that much, you know, uh, zeal in his or her approaches so that he or she can put into practice what he or she has learned. So the curricular paradigm shift where we have uh, thought the state curriculum has uh, uh, moved away a little bit from, there is a paradigm shift. There is a paradigm shift in, in, in including an integrated approach. It is not a bottle tight segmented approach anymore. In, integrated approach is, you know, say, let us consider something like gender sensitivity. It can be taught across curriculum. It can be taught across subjects. Uh, like, um, you know, uh, the, 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 the core values of honesty, the core values of truthfulness. These are the values which can be across the curriculum. Integrated approach is not only making uh, the sense conveyed that it is physical science and life science built in together to make a common science book or uh, social studies book includes history, geography, civics, economics, not like that. They, they are there, of course they are there. But beyond that, the integrated approach is, a, I mean, we have said, stated in the fifth bullet there, it is a holistic development. It is aimed at a holistic development of the learner. So the curriculum is now having an integrated approach, a child-friendly approach. It is doing away from rote learning. Of course, rote learning per se wouldn't have meant a huge uh, detrimental thing unless that is the sole way of learning. I mean, there are several modes of learning. If I wish to memorize a table, a numerical table, then maybe to some extent, the rote learning has to be resorted to. But there are various fields of learning which encompasses comprehension, cognition, and transfer of knowledge, things like this, which where rote learning doesn't have any role to play. I mean, this is, this is only a reserve. This is a, a place from where I draw on my information. That's all finished. I mean, there are several vistas in the learning domain where I need to move away from rote learning and uh, uh, give importance, due importance to several other facets of uh, the learning procedure. Emphasis on construction of knowledge, where it is uh, very much evident, applicable, the knowledge should be constructed. Constructed, I mean, curriculum is per se, as we know, curriculum is the sum total of all experiences. So if, what is curriculum? If, if this is curriculum, if curriculum is some total of experience, all experiences that the child has, he or she brings all these experiences with him or her inside the classroom. So already she is uh, in a process, she is in a stage where she can construct things of his or her own, uh, uh, own means, own prowess. Only the teacher, the facilitator, the one who is making the things to be learned should emphasize in designing the curriculum in such a way that construction of knowledge is, give, is given a due importance and a place to be acknowledged with and providing scope for holistic development of learners. Of course, 
if I uh, abide by all these four uh, bullets that I have told before, the fifth bullet is, of course, uh, it's a, you know, a natural consequence of all the four things that we have stated. Before. Now, the paradigm shift in syllabus. So what is we have stated about the curriculum now, the syllabus is something which is suited to the cognition of the students vis-a-vis -vis the learner age groups. Of course, there are stage theories of learning. So um, the cognition of students as part of the learner age groups are kept in mind when the syllabus is framed, diffusion of rigid subject domains, as I said, I mean, it's not a watertight chamber. When I learn history, it's not the history that I learn. It's not the facts of history that I learn of. I also learn of the things where the, uh, the place where that history has unfolded, they, it had some geographical uh, uh, characteristics as well. I mean, there have been some several instances where we can dissolve the uh, specific subject domains in bringing in a greater vision where transfer of a transfer of knowledge can take place and it can be supported through our syllabus. Clearly stated expected learning outcome. This is very important. The learning outcome, expected learning outcome, ELO, e expected learning outcome that we'll be shortly uh, talking on a bit more. This is a very, very important thing. So I'll come on this bullet once again in the later slide. So let me get on to the next one. Graded competence in skills, uh, skill area. The skill areas are graded, of course, as far, you know, the stages in which the child uh, is going through. Uh, integration of life skills across the content areas that I was talking of a moment ago. That, so for example, gender sensitivity. I mean, it's not like I, I, mean, I learned gender sensitivity from my civics content or my history content or my language content. I mean, it's all together. I go through the entire content area and uh, the things like uh, whatever, whatever facet we need to know about life skills can be communicated through even problems in mathematics. I mean, when you, not only the, the, the problems, the arithmetic problems where we have, we give certain sentences, we state the problem, the narratives can also inculcate, in, include such uh, things as the life skills, say for example, gen, gender sensitivity, or uh, where the rights protection uh, takes place, everybody should honor everybody else's rights. And uh, I mean, these things to be tolerant and things like that. This tolerance can be communicated across the curriculum. So the integration of skills across the content areas can be done. Suggest, the next uh, bullet is to suggest progression of content areas from known to unknown, as I told you before, local to global and concrete to abstract. So these are the, uh, now we come up to the paradigm shifts in textbooks, developed in line with the pedagogical and psychological principles. So, Textbooks are, say, for example, what kind of, uh, uh, I would request uh, the moderator to tell me the time limit because I'm not very sure what time I'll be having, maybe another two, three minutes, five minutes. Uh, if, uh, sir, can I know? Uh, uh, I'm, I cannot hear you, sir. Do I have enough time to go on or? Uh, two minutes, please sum up. Two minutes, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so we have some paradigm shifts in the textbook. The presentation of content is easy. The, it's it's the spiral, as we know. Uh, the emphasize, emphasize we emphasize on social equity issues, equality and equity both are equally important. So these are there for the child to go through in their textbooks. Evaluation, of course, is an integral part of the curriculum. And the, how do we evaluate? The model has been developed. You, we all know about CC, continuous and comprehensive evaluation, the primary and upper primary. Internal formative evaluation, but we call it evaluation IFE. It's in the learning triangle, what we can see how the evaluation is poised. We answer in the evaluation process, the what part. I mean, we have some expected learning outcomes, clearly stated action verbs, action words that the child will be able to, will be able to do, will be able to see, will be able to analyze, will be able to transfer uh, information, will be able to apply, uh, will be able to explore and narrate and write. So things like in action terms, we have some expected learning competencies. These are the what, one vertex of the triangle. The other one is how. It is the from what, from the expectation of the learning outcomes, expected learning outcomes to the actually uh, how do we go in achieving our expectations? That is the pedagogical process that we define within the classroom. And after we have uh, we have gone through the pedagogical process, 
to answer the question whether whether the expected learning outcomes have been attained we go through the evaluation process of cc so what question is answered through the elo how question is the path that is a pedagogical process keeping in view the learning uh, philosophies principles in the curriculum embedded in the curriculum and finally the evaluation to see how much we have achieved and how far can be done characteristics of expected learning outcomes of course it is embraces understanding application of knowledge use a simple specific action words as i said perceptible measured and measurable learning learner centered so after that the cc has to be continuous and i'm sorry uh, you are saying something no sir yeah. yeah continuous part has the continuity part is that the formal assessment see when we say formative assessment we say summative evaluation that is one thing we have taken into consideration the formative assessment is inbuilt ingrained in the process of teaching learning transactional process within the classroom every day each day every time for each teacher across uh, the subject areas the domains so that is the formative assessment is to assess the process and understand what needs to be done and when we, we a moment ago i said there was a uh, the summative part summative part was the evaluative part we give a value judgment after say three and a half months or three months period when we have gone through a certain number of units say three units 28 periods fine we have gone through 28 periods we have uh, transacted three or four units now i would like to see the achievement level now we give a evaluative evaluative answer to our own work a collective work of the teacher and the students sorry to interrupt they... gautam sir please uh... hey. sorry okay. sum up if you can yeah yeah, yeah of course i am almost done okay so okay. formative assessment have five indicators uh, these are the five indicators uh, and uh, finally the summative evaluation so this is all uh, i mean the evaluation part is the